What's up, everybody? I was going through TOA, and I'm at 473 right now, and I was thinking that maybe I should make a video to assist people in TOA. I received some emails for account optimizations to help out people in TOA, so I believe I'll just go through a quick um, demonstration on what I do in TOA, um, like my beginning team, and just what I'm using now. So this is just TOA normal at the moment, um, but in TOA hard, you're not allowed to use the same monsters. Um, like you can't use double Lucians or like double Zyros or anything like that in TOA hard, but we'll just focus on TOA normal for now. So I'm at 473. Uh, right now I just have a just a burst team. This team right here that you see on the screen is just, uh, uh, this will get me all the way to floor 100 by itself. I don't have to change anything out. It kills all the boss floors by itself. But it's just a big burst damage team that uh, probably a lot of people won't be able to accomplish until they're later in the game. So I will show you what I originally used when I first cleared TOA um, 100. And yeah, so we'll just get right into it. So Beretta is the first monster that I use. Beretta provides uh, continuous damage on skill 3, applies 2 dots, and dots are going to be important uh, once you reach floor 70 and above, the monsters just have too much health for you to just burst down with damage. Unless you're able to do what my previous team with the Zyros, Devolution, and Beth, stuff like that. But uh, for your first starting out team, I would just recommend doing Beretta just because the skill kit is very useful uh, specifically for TOA. So the third skill with the continuous dot damages applies two dots, and then the second skill that will show um, Turbulence does reduces the attack bar down to zero. So that's gonna be very beneficial when you're going against bosses and you don't want the boss players to take a turn. So you'll use this on them in order to uh, mitigate the damage that they can output. And as I said before, skill three applies the two continuous damage effects and it's really beneficial because you get to keep stacking them on the enemy because they last for three turns. Um, Bread is also really nice because Beretta has a speed lead, and in TOA, you want your monsters to be as fast as possible so then they can continuously take turns and um, deny the turns from the enemy. Um, and yeah, for Beretta's build, you want around 45% accuracy. Um, anywhere between 40 and 50 is good, but 45, you don't want to go above 45 because then it's just wasted stats. So 45% accuracy is the threshold, just like in Giants B10. And besides that, you just want to make Beretta tanky, have a good amount of health. I would say around 22 to 25,000 is okay. And then just as much defense as you can get. You don't need any attack. But try to get the speed up there above plus 70. And that'll uh, make sure that Beretta goes first before all the other uh, monsters. So you're going to use Beretta as a leader skill and root it on Despair. Because, um, because you want to give Beretta more versatility. And besides just dotting down the uh, the waves and then using that skill too on the boss. So you could also have a possible stun chance against the enemy with the uh, despair runes. So the next monster is going to be your healer, which is going to be Bella. Bella provides a defense break a, on skill 1, a strip on skill 2, and then the big heals and the attack bar boost on skill 3. You could also use Chessoon. Uh, Chessoon is actually a stronger healer than uh, Bella, and also provides like attack buff. So, but Bella is probably your first healer that you built and six star because of your GP10 team. So that's why I recommend you using Bella. And then also just with the strip and defense break, it's really useful, um, especially the strip, because there are some floors where people have some of the monsters have like invincibility or shields or something that's like hard to get through. Uh, so Bella just provides that usefulness that Chassoon wouldn't. But um, I have mine on the Violent set. Um, the one that you get after you fuse Veramos, just put that Violent set on Bella. It's more important for Bella to have Violent than for Veramos to have Violent. Because you want Bella to rotate the skills as much as possible. So you want the heal to be up at all times and you want that strip on skill 2 to be up. So since they are on low cooldowns, then you want to be able to utilize the violence set on Bella. If you happen to have other violent runes, then you can prioritize those on Veramos next. 
But uh, for Bella, try to have, again, around like 22 to 25,000 HP, and then stack as much defense as you can, and um, utilize the violence set, which should get you around what I, ha what I have here is about plus 70. Uh, plus 70 speed is good. Accuracy, not that important. So you can go, you can probably get away with around 25 to 30% accuracy, but always shoot for that, um, that 45%. So next, I would say use uh, Mav. Uh, so this little guy is uh, pretty much only built for uh, TOA. You could also use him like Rift Beast and stuff, but it's not that useful. There's a lot of better op options out there. So I wouldn't use Mav for, uh, for anything else but TOA. So he'll just have one build the entire time you have him. I know it's kind of like a waste of a six star, so you could most likely keep him at five star for him to do his job but just for extra protection and tankiness um try to just go for that uh for the six star it's better to have him on violent because you want him to rotate the skill three which is uh he removes removes a harmful effect on all allies decreases their cooldown by one turn and increases their attack speed so Decreasing their cooldown is really nice, especially for Beretta, because you're trying to get Beretta to use skill 2 and skill 3 as much as possible, and to get those dots on the enemy. And, um, yeah, also being able to remove the harmful effect, because there are some waves that'll defense break or uh, stun your team, and he will cleanse all of that. And then also just providing that attack speed is really nice, so then your team could just get that many more turns over the enemy. His skill 2 also taunts and heals himself. Um, taunts or provokes however you want to say it so he does a provoke on the boss um, you want to use that on the boss so if you're going against like Sierra the Sierra stage or um, the Poseidon stage Artemiel stuff like that instead of Artemiel healing himself when he takes a turn he'll have to hit Mav because Mav provoked him um, instead of Sierra putting bombs on your team then she'll just use her first skill on Mav because uh, he uses the provoke so it's just a very useful skill and if you don't want to build Mav and you want to just use like fusion monsters then you can actually fuse Jean the light paladin which is right here and she also has the provoke on all enemies for two turns and then uh, she also provides a shield and uh, cleanse on skill 2 or the invincibility and in cleanse on skill 2 and then she also uh, heals on skill 1 so she's uh, very versatile and very useful for a TOA, but if you don't have the resources to build her um, and you have a Mav, then it's okay, you can just go ahead and build Mav. Uh, for his build, you actually want him to go after everybody on your team because everybody's going to use their skills and then he'll prior prioritize his skill 3 when it's up and then you could uh, uh, he'll rotate their skills by decreasing it by one turn with his skill 3. Uh, so next on the team, you do Veramos. Veramos is pretty much the standard build that you'll build him for uh, Giants, Dragons, TOA. Just pretty much he'll be built like that for the rest of the game. But he's really useful because his skill 2 has a uh, very low cooldown. So it's nice to have him on that violent set. But if you can't get him on violent, then try to get him around plus 100, plus 110 speed with a swift set. But uh, being able to stun on his skill 2 makes it really nice. Um, so if you get a decent amount of accuracy on there, about 45%, that's great. And then with skill 1, you apply even more continuous damage effects to um, just helping out Beretta dot down all of the enemies. And then last but not least will be Spectra. So Spectra is really nice because uh, Spectra's base stats are actually really good. Um, having a high defense and a decent amount of HP is really good for support. But then Spectra really shines with um, her speed. At plus one, at 126 speed, one of the fastest monsters in the game, and you could really abuse that by uh, attaching a Swift set to her. And the reason why Spectra is really good is with the skill three, um, reduces the attack uh, bar by 30% on all enemies, and decreases their attack speed for two turns. So you get the attack speed buff with Mav, and then you get the decrease attack speed on the enemy with Spectra. So it's like two for one combo, well now you'll be 60% faster than the enemy while these buffs are on. So that's really nice. And then skill two, inflicts damage 
proportional to the enemy's max HP. That's really nice, um, especially against bosses. Deals um, a ton of damage against bosses, and then if you have um, Bella do the defense break on the boss, and then Spectre goes after that, then Spectre does huge damage. And, um, and then the benefit of having Spectre to be really fast will be when Mav... So she'll like constantly rotate this skill because she's going to be the fastest one on your team. And then Mav will rotate that uh, skill with his skill 3. Um, and yeah, and all these guys you do want to have about 45% accuracy. So if you can manage it, try to get 45% accuracy. The main ones you want that accuracy on though are on Beretta and Spectra. Pheromos, it's okay if you don't have the 45%. You can do like 30, 35%. Bella... Um, you should try to be pushing 45%, even 55% with Vela, just because uh, you're, after you're done clearing TOA, you're going to transition over to Dragons, and you want that 55% on your Bella Dion. And then Mav, anywhere between like 20 and 35% is fine. If you could hit that 45% threshold, that's good, so then you can land that Provoke uh, more often. So now we'll just get into some runs, and I'll just showcase um, how this team works on Auto. And this was the first team that I built when I first started trying to clear TOA. Um, there are some floors that it struggles on. I don't know them off the top of my head at the moment, but um, yeah, yeah. So I don't know the ones off the top of my head at the moment. But as you can see, Mav helps uh, rotate those skills with the skill three, and all the dots and the stuns. You're pretty much just doing like turn control and turn manipulation. So uh, yeah, the stuns are really effective. Um, like on a Lucian so then yeah the Lucian just can't clear the wave uh, to clear you like kill you and stuff like that so as you can see there Beretta landing the, the dots and then whenever they take a turn those continuous damage it just they stack up after a while and it just does big damage against the enemy so it's gonna be a little slower than like the average team but this is definitely one of the safest like auto teams that you could have that is reliable and could do the floors all the way from floor 1 all the way to floor 100. And this was the team that I used to clear floor 100 on both uh, Lilith, Lilith and um, whatever the guy's name is. I can't remember. But yeah. But I used this team on both of those. So you will come into somewhat of a struggle on like the Annabelle and Juno stage. That's the floor 100, um, just because Annabelle with the uh, defense breaks and then the Junos, if you land too many dots on them, then they just constantly heal themselves. But uh, another benefit to Veramos is he can cleanse every single turn that he takes. He'll cleanse your team. Um, and then Mav is there for a backup, uh, pretty much like a backup cleanse as well when he utilizes his skill three. Yeah, but I was just running my TOA, and I was just thinking the struggles that I had in the beginning, um, like how to rune certain monsters, what to build, what's useful, and all these guys are running like nat fives and like four stars I don't have yet. So this is kind of nice as like a free to play team. I believe you do have to summon Spectra. I don't know if there's a. I think there is a secret dungeon for Spectra. I think the only one that you have to summon that you can't do a secret dungeon for or find through like the scenario would be Mav, I'm pretty sure. But like I said before, if you can't, um, if you're having a hard time finding Mav, you could also do like summon stones to see if he's in the rotation. And then if not, um, then you could try to fuse Gene. I know fusing Gene will take a lot more time and a lot more resources, but Gene is actually a monster that even I use currently. So she's really useful. Uh, put her on like the violent revenge set is what I have her on right now and Yeah, but if you're really anxious and want to get into uh, TOA and try to clear it as um, As early as possible then I would say this is a very solid team to start doing that Yeah, and you can see they're not really struggling here. They're just slowly Taking on the waves and they just do their thing. So this is floor 73 and yeah, it's doing its thing. It's pretty solid. So if you have any questions, um, let me know down in the comments below. 
you can let me know some of the monsters that you use. I just wanted to showcase just like the beginning team in order and like a free to play team for people just to see and just to see how it works. Um, yeah, that's all I have. So I hope you guys have a good day and thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.